All right, guys, coming at you for homework number eight. And it's all about slope, slope of a line. So for homework eight, we got a whole bunch of these. I think I got 11 examples lined up on slope. First one is the slope formula, which involves a whole lot of X's and a whole lot of Y's. So whenever you're doing slope, slope's always identified by the letter M. So instead of S for slope, it's always M for slope. So your slope formula, y2 minus y1, this is over x2 minus x1. So this is your formula you're going to use for all the questions here on homework number 8 for slope. y2, y1 across the top, x2 minus x1 across the bottom. All right, let's just do an example. You can see where all this fits in it. So how this works is you're given a couple of points, a couple of ordered pairs to start with. 9, 2, 7, 12. So here are your two ordered pairs, 9, 2, and 7, 12. And every time you have an ordered pair, you have an x-coordinate, y-coordinate, x-coordinate, y-coordinate. So each ordered pair is made up of an x, made up of a y. Now this is how I tell the difference. This is my first ordered pair, so I call this x1, y1, my first x and my first y. Over here is my second ordered pair. So I call this x2, y2. So what I've got now is I've got every number labeled with an x1, y1, x2, y2. So my formula for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I can grab these numbers and put them in the right spots. So the y's are first, the 12 and the 2 are first, 12 minus 2. Y's go across the top, X's go across the bottom. So X2, X1, so you got 7 minus 9. So you turn it into two little math problems. 12 minus 2, that's equal to 10. And then 7 minus 9 is negative 2. I think you can still see that. I'll, I'll jump it down here. So we got 10 over negative 2, which means my slope is equal to negative 5. So slope. You've got x1s, y1s, x2s, y2s, twos. put them all into the right places. Let's run another one. Ooh, wow. So here we go. Third example, same setup, negative 1, 5, 4, negative 8. So again, you're given an ordered pair and then another ordered pair. With your two ordered pairs, you can label everything correctly. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So you've got everything labeled correctly. Your formula for slope is the Y's across the top, the X's across the bottom. So for your slope formula, Y2, Y1, X2, X1. So you can grab your y's and jump them across the top, negative 8 minus 5, and it's always subtraction, always subtraction. And then you have 4 minus negative 1. So this example is full of negative signs, so you have to be real careful you don't make a little mistake with your positive negative signs. So negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13, 4 minus negative 1, positive 5. So your answer for slope this time is this fraction, a negative 13 over 5. This one doesn't reduce. So this is your final answer. You always check to see if you can reduce it down. In this case, you're good. All right. Issues on that one, all those negative signs, be careful. Okay, here we go. Number four, we're going to run the same setup again, 7, 6, and then we have negative 3 and 1. So here's what I've got. For my fourth example, I've got these two ordered pairs. I've got everything labeled again correctly for number four. My, my formula is still the same. I've got my y's across the top. I have your x's across the bottom. So this is our formula for slope. So 1 minus 6, y's across the top. 
negative 3 minus 7. And so you have a math problem across the top, math problem across the bottom. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. So now you have this fraction, a negative divided by a negative, and 5 tenths reduces down. So for your answer here, for slope, negative divided by negative gives you a positive. 5 over 10 gives you 1 half. So answer on this one actually turned out to be negative divided by negative is positive. 5 tenths becomes 1 half. Let's do one more here. So I think you guys have got this. The trick is just being organized with all your positive and negative signs and not making a small mistake. All right, two, negative one. And what's my second one? Negative two, five. So let's do one more of the basics just to make sure we've got everything crystal clear. Again, we're going to do our formula with the y's on top, x's on the bottom. We're plugging in the y's first. So this is 5 minus negative 1. This is negative 2 minus 2. So you've got all the right numbers in all the right places. 5 minus negative 1, that's a positive 6. Negative 2 and negative 2 is a negative 4. So every time you get an answer, Check to see if you can reduce this. Divide by 2, divide by 2, 6 fourths is definitely going to reduce. So when you get your final answer for slope, it's still a negative, but 6 fourths reduces to become 3 halves. So that is finding slope of these two ordered pairs, these two points for your line. So finding slope. Okay. Well, this was finding slope by looking at the ordered pairs. You can also find slope just by looking at lines. All right, here's your two trick questions. Let's say you have a perfectly straight horizontal line and a perfectly straight vertical line. So here's perfectly straight horizontal line, perfectly straight vertical line. This is your trick. One of these slopes is zero. One of these slopes is undefined. So do you remember which one's which? Is this zero? Is this zero? Which one's zero? Which one's undefined? Horizontal line, your slope is zero. Vertical line, your slope is undefined. So those are the trick questions that always show up every time you do a slope chapter in every class you take. So in this class, your next math class, this always shows up. Horizontal line zero, vertical line undefined. Here, let's, let me show you what the ordered pairs look like for that. So if you didn't have the line, let's just say number eight here, you just got a couple of the ordered pairs. So 10, negative seven, what's my second one here? 13, negative seven. So you just walked up to this problem. We've already done five of these today. And it looks like a normal problem. You just say, oh, okay, here's my x1, here's my y1, here's my x2, here's my y2. I start running the y's across the top, the x's across the bottom. And it just looks like, okay, just numbers. But about now, you're starting to see, like, wait a minute, negative 7 minus negative 7, oh, that's a 0. 13 minus 10 is 3. So now you have a fraction with a zero in it. So now you got to decide, does this just turn out to be just zero or does this turn out to be undefined? So that's what you got to call. When the zero is on top, if the zero is on top, you're okay. Your slope is just zero. Zero on top, you're okay. It just turns out to be zero, which means it's going to be a perfectly straight horizontal line. There you go. Let's do one the other direction. What if your zero is on bottom? Let's see if I can draw one of those up real quick. 9. Let's do one with a 0 on bottom. Do I got one of those? 5, 3, 5, negative 8. 5, 3, 5, negative 8. Okay, here we go. So, x1, y1, x2, y2. 
y's, negative 8 and 3 across the top, x's across the bottom. So you, sometimes when you're not ready for it, it sneaks up on you, like this one does right here. Negative 8 and negative 3, that's negative 11, but then 5 minus 5, you're like, oh no. So now you're on full alert, there's a 0 in your fraction. <laughs> you cannot divide by 0. You cannot have a 0 on the bottom, not allowed. So. Zero on the bottom, bad news. That means your slope, oh, it's undefined. So definitely be on the lookout for that. So we got eight questions on the assignment today. I think there's two or three where one of these happens, zero on bottom or zero on top. Does it turn out to be zero? Does it turn out to be undefined? Guys, it just seems like every, every time I teach a, a class, Somewhere in the class, there's a slope question like, oh, let's say number 10. It just ends up on a test. What is slope of a horizontal line? Or number 11, what is slope of a vertical line? Just seems like all math books and all math tests somewhere in the in the whole semester they slide one of these two questions at you. All right, so keywords right here. This one's horizontal. This one's vertical. So one of these turns out to be zero, and one of these turns out to be undefined. <coughs> horizontal line, ha ha ha, m equals zero. Vertical line, m equals undefined. So a horizontal line, your slope zero. Vertical line, slope's undefined. You can't get out of that. That usually shows up on a test somewhere. Okay, 11 examples. Man, that's a lot. Well, we have eight questions on homework eight. So for homework eight, we have eight questions. And this is gonna be uh, questions. And this is 29 through 36. So for homework 8, it starts at 29, ends at 36. So when I put them up here, I'm just going to keep putting them up. <laughs> so don't get your hopes up too quick. we got to go all the way through 36. So there's going to be 8 of these for you to find slope on. All right, let's do this. Finding some slope. Here we go. So 29... All right, so for 29, you got negative 3, negative 2, 1, and 10. For 30, negative 2 and 5, 2, negative 1, 31. Let's see what we got here on 31. 9, 2, and negative 1, 7. All right, like I said, guys, don't get your hopes up. I just keep it going. I might be able to fit one more down here. We can fit 32 down here. It's 32. 13, 1, 13, negative 7. Oh, and just so you know right now, 32. Here's a 13 minus a 13. That's a trick one. This is going to be 0 under fine. So keep your eyes on 32. There's a trap coming for you. All right, let's keep it rolling. 33, so 2, negative 5, 6, 3, 34, 11, negative 4, negative 6, negative 4, There it is again, guys. So negative 1 and 3, negative 1, oh, positive 6. Sorry about that. 
guess it won't matter. That's the trick. The negative ones, woo! So 36 is gonna be zero undefined. Where's another one? Yep, here's another one. 34, careful there. That's gonna be zero undefined. Okay, so we've got homework eight in the books all the way through 36. This also on this homework eight is gonna be due at noon on Wednesday, April 22nd. So let's write that out. Due by noon, Wednesday, April 22nd. All right, guys, a lot of slope. There you go.